The R logistic regression function we used in the last video does binary classification. What if we need to do multi-class classification? We can perform what is called one versus all classification. This notebook demonstrates that on the built-in IRIS data set. The IRIS data set is a very well-known data set with 150 observations, 50 each of each of three classes of iris flower. Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. It has four predictors, which are sepal length and width and petal length and width. Here I'm showing pairs with the four predictors. We see here a lot of correlation between petal width and petal length, and less so between sepal width and sepal length. This code is plotting petal length and petal width and coloring the dots by class. We see that it will be fairly easy to separate this class over here, but it's a little bit messier to separate these two classes. The idea of one versus all is to build three different classifiers because we have three classes. So each of the three data sets that we'll use will be Virginica or not, Setosa or not, and Versicolor or not. So this code here does that. It builds three different data frames, Iris Virginica, Iris Setosa, and Iris Versicolor. Here I'm building a function that will work with all three of those data sets to predict species from the predictors, extract the probabilities, classify one or zero, measure and output accuracy, and the confusion matrix. Here we're applying our function to the Virginica data set, and we get an accuracy of 1. Notice that there are no misclassified observations. Also on Setosa, we got an accuracy of 1. Versicolor didn't do as well. We had an accuracy of 0.7. Since the data is divided evenly 50-50-50, we could just average our results together to get an overall accuracy. Recall that to get the loss function for logistic regression, we started with the likelihood function. What's the difference between likelihood and probability? A normal distribution is defined by two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. The probability space is the area under the curve. The probability for a given x value can be found by finding the y value on the curve for that x value. Now assume that you don't know the mean and the standard deviation. You don't know the distribution. But assume that you do know a set of x, y values where y is the likelihood of getting that y value for the x. In statistics, the likelihood function measures the goodness of fit of a statistical model to a sample of data for given values of the unknown parameters. Logistic regression is solved as a maximum likelihood estimate optimization problem, MLE, meaning that an iterative approach looks for the parameters of the distribution that would fit the data points. To do that, the first derivative, the gradient, is used in some optimization algorithms. The second derivative, the Hessian, is used in others. Let's talk about gradient descent first. When we take the first derivative of the loss function, we get a convex function. We can find the optimal parameters, shown here in yellow, by an iterative approach. We'll start at some random spot on the curve, and then with each step, we'll move in the direction of the gradient towards the optimum value. The step size is given by this parameter, eta. Making the step size too small would take longer to converge. Making the step size too large might overstep the optimum. When we get to deep learning, you'll hear the term stochastic gradient descent, which is when data is randomly, that's the stochastic part, selected in batches instead of all at once. For logistic regression, R uses a different optimization method 
called Newton Raphson. At each step, either the full Hessian is recalculated or updated. A key insight in Newton's method is that if it is computationally difficult to compute a minimum for a given function, then come up with a function that shares important properties with the original function, but is easier to minimize. At each iteration, Newton's method constructs a quadratic approximation to the objective function, in which the first and second derivatives are the same. The approximate function is minimized instead of the original. How is this approximate function found? A Taylor series about the point is used, but ignores derivatives past the second. A Taylor series converts a function into a power function, and the first few terms can be used to get an approximate value for a function. Have you ever noticed that once you code up an algorithm, you understand it much better than you did before? That's the motivation behind this section. We're in notebook 6.4, again using the plasma data and getting the coefficients from the model. First, we set up the sigmoid function here, 1 over 1 plus exp to the negative c. We'll let random weights start at 1 and 1. Then we'll make a matrix out of our data for ease of multiplication. And instead of our labels being 1 and 2, I'd rather they're 0 and 1. Next, we need code for the gradient descent part. This algorithm first starts with the weights 1 and a learning rate of 0 0.001, and then it iterates over many iterations, calculating the sigmoid of our matrix times the weights, to get a probability vector, calculating our errors, and then updating according to our learning rate times the matrix times the error to eventually learn the weights. This will take a little bit to run. And we see it eventually got to the same weights over here, negative 5.6 and 1.5, that the RGLM function got. Again, this is not the exact same method that R uses, but it is an optimization. I want to point out a few things mentioned in the end of the chapter. Sometimes when you're running logistic regression, you may get some of these warnings that it didn't converge or fitted probabilities numerically 0 or 1 occurred. This can happen when your data is too linearly separable. The warning is saying that the data separated perfectly, so it couldn't maximize the likelihood. In the GLM function, we use family equals binomial, which is the link function. The link function links the mean of your target to the linear term. Other families are available in GLM, including Poisson and other distributions. Keep in mind that logistic regression does classification. It's considered a linear model because it's linear in the parameters. Its strengths are it will separate the classes really well if they're linearly separable. It's computationally inexpensive. And it has a probabilistic output. Like linear regression, it is prone to underfitting. It's considered a high bias classifier. It's not flexible enough to capture complex, nonlinear decision boundaries. We had some new terminology in this chapter, mainly having to do with the metrics. As always, I have a quick reference section at the end showing how to do logistic regression in R, how to extract the probabilities, transform those into predictions, output a confusion matrix, and accuracy, as well as other metrics with the caret library. And finally, I show how to do the ROCR graph and the AUC metric. The next algorithm we'll learn is Naive Bayes, which learns probabilities from data. Before getting to that algorithm, the next video will be a short review of probability distributions.